Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, shouldn't of all ages, Hollywood Shono here, about to give you another Marvel Strike Force video. In this video, I wanted to make up a master speed guide for all of you guys that are wondering how fast characters are. You guys have seen some tier lists from Valley Flying Casino, probably from Seton Mobile Gamer, though, so if you guys are looking for a tier list of how powerful overall characters are, go check out their videos. However, I want to compile a list of the speed for all 79 characters that are currently in the game as of the Deadpool slash Cable update. And I wanted to tell you guys that speed can matter in certain situations. Obviously we know how ridiculous Black Widow and Gamora are, well their speed influences that. How good could a character like Hulk be if for example his speed wasn't so low or if he could be dispelled or if for example let's just say Iron Fist had more speed or a better kit, or even if Daredevil had less speed, and he's already a decent character, or even how good some of the healers are, for example, Shield Medic if they had a little bit more speed, or the Hydra Scientist if they had more speed, or even if, for example, the Shield Operative had a bigger heal, or if characters like Winter Soldier had a little bit more speed, Cable's kind of on the mediocre side of speed, Thor is a huge offender to a slow person, and Kingpin, yes, he's a slow character, but I think it's justified because he's got one of the best kits in the game for support. Or what about everybody's favorite, Ronin the Accuser, who is the slowest character in the game right there with Hulk. So, hopefully you guys like this little statistical information, and I'm gonna break it down into categories very slow which is 65 to 80 below average which is 81 to 99 average which is 100 to 110 fast which is 111 to 115 very fast which is 116 to 119 which probably doesn't need to be there and then ultra fast which is 125 to 135 a lot of the characters on the list fall in the 100 to 110 list but i just want to kind of get that out there and you guys can have an ultimate speed guide and let me know how you guys feel about certain characters. And I feel that speed could be one of the areas that Fox Next can actually buff characters because they can make certain slow characters faster and make them more useful. I think characters like Thanos are okay, but I think that Hulk speed needs to be increased significantly or he needs an undispellable taunt much like Thanos to actually be useful. Let's get on with the speed list. Alright, so starting off in the very slow category, we have Hulk at 65, the slowest speed character in the game, along with his buddy, Ronin the Accuser, which is why a lot of people don't like the character. Not to mention that his kit apparently was a lot better in soft launch, but we'll have to see what they can do to improve the character. Next up we have Drax, and I feel his low speed is justified. It is good that he is dispellable because I think it's a little bit balanced. Because Drax can do a little bit of damage. His defense up obviously makes him a menace to deal with. And I think that if they didn't have the defense up, uh, the spellable taunt isn't a big deal. So I think that's fine. Kingpin is at 75 speed. He's the fourth slowest character in the game. But obviously his support slash usefulness is super good. And he is regarded as one of the top 10 characters in the game. Next up we have the aim security which is speed 76 and yes you want slow taunts but I feel the aim security needs a defense buff and undispellable in order to be useful but because of that the character is garbage. There's no reason to slow yourself and taunt if you don't have a way to buff yourself. So the aim monstrosity again super slow. Basically if you use your offense up you just obliterate the aim monstrosity you stop what you're doing and kill it because it's so slow. Next up we have the Kree Cyborg that is supposed to be armed with cybernetics that enhance speed and strength but when you're already slow yeah that doesn't work. And another popular one who's also really good in the cosmic campaign is Thor because he does do a lot of damage on his basic attack, his three stuns, his two can chain to a weak enemy. So there is some value to Thor. The problem is he's slow and he is the last character on the very slow list along with Luke Cage. Now, Luke Cage I think does have a good toolkit, however, the one area I would like to see him improve on is, like Drax, getting a defense up when he taunts. I think that taunting is actually very disadvantageous for Luke Cage 
unless you have a two turn taunt, but then you still have to have a defense buff. And I think that's what they want with the kit, is that they want you to be able to taunt for two turns, then throw your defense up. But I don't know. I just feel that maybe Luke Cage needs a speed buff on the first turn of the taunt. I don't know. But the reason that Luke Cage is not that useful outside of Arena is the fact that when he taunts, much like Crossbones, he takes a lot of damage. And because he's in the bottom 10 for speed, he's not going to recover that quickly. Now we're in the below average category. These characters are by no means fast. And that's kind of why I threw them in the 81 to 99 category. We got the Re Aim Researcher, who applies and removes negative effects. And applying negative effects just doesn't work when the character is slow. So I really think the Aim Researcher needs a speed buff in like the 110 range. And maybe it'll be useful, maybe. But... I think this is better against Quake than it is actually applying negative effects. Because you can remove negative effects, much like Jessica Jones, it's pretty good. Second one on the slow speed list is the Kree Reaper at 83. Kree Reaper can be annoying with heal block, but other than that, not that good of a character. The Kree Noble can give ability energy to people, which is pretty good. But all the minions not have enough... A second like ultimate ability is just really bad and makes most of them pretty garbage because other characters are just going to outshine them. Now obviously a Kree team can work really well in Blitz but that's probably the most value you're gonna get. Next up we have the Hydra Grenadier which I find to just be too slow to be useful. Yes he does have area damage, yes his two can also remove a buff, but yeah I just don't find the Hydra Grenadier to be that useful. He just doesn't do enough. So I think a damage and a speed buff is definitely necessary for the Grenadier. Next up we have the Mercenary Riot Guard. Riot Guard does have defense up and taunt. But he's just one of those characters that really doesn't do anything. Like Drax can chain multiple enemies and heal. Thanos does have an area of effect. He has an offense down on his taunt. Luke Cage has defense buff. The Riot Guard just kind of stands there and does nothing. Winter Soldier is kind of a slower character. And obviously if you're fighting against a Winter Soldier, if you don't have defensive buffs, you need to kill him right away because he does apply a two-turn heal block. So Winter Soldier is useful. And it's kind of good that he is this slow because otherwise he would just be too good. His ultimate is, is available right from the start and yeah, it's really powerful. Cable we haven't seen a whole lot on, but he is in the below average category as far as speed goes. Because 91 just isn't that great. He obviously does have some synergy with his passive. Giving him extra speed bar. And this can be super useful with Black Widow or even Gamora. Or Black Panther. So you might see some interesting composition. And yeah, if you have a way to manipulate the speed bar and increase your own. You might not even need to run a tank. Because you can obliterate the main damage dealers before they become relevant. We'll have to see on that. The Hydra Armored Guard is another taunt that just doesn't really do much. Yes, his primary attack does do damage. It's a little bit better than the shield variant, but yeah, not really. The Hydra Sniper can do some decent damage, and he does have an offensive buff, which is pretty cool. But why don't you just run Mercenary Lieutenant that affects more people? Then we have Thanos. I feel that Thanos got balanced really good when they improved his resistance by 1,000%. Because the main strength of Thanos is he needs to soak up hits. And with his high amount of health, he does do that. The problem was, when his taunt was dispellable, you just dispel the taunt and go, go about your business. Now that the taunt is undispellable, Thanos is actually useful. And great changes actually make the card useful. And you do see him quite a bit in high-level Blitz. He is great at protecting, especially with Drax or Captain America. So I think Thanos is good where he is. Next up we have the Hydra Scientist, who is an interesting one because along with the single target heal, applies death proof. This is really good in Blitz, possibly in Arena. It's not really that good in Raids or regular campaign just because it doesn't do enough. I think if it was a big heal like Night Nurse, it's possible, but yeah. Scientist just gets overshadowed by Night Nurse and even the Shield Operative being able to protect low health targets. There are definitely better options. Next up we have the Shield Security and Non-Lethal just describes it. it. does have utility with stuns and slows, but why don't you just run Quake or Black Widow that can do that and they have more speed. 
Next up on the list we have Wolverine. Wolverine, obviously a great raid character because he can heal himself. Which is obviously good because if Wolverine takes damage and you have a Drax on your team, Night Nurse will probably heal Drax instead of Wolverine. And his ultimate does do a lot of damage, much like Deadpool's, much like Winter Soldier. So there is some use for Wolverine. I don't know exactly how useful he is in Arena. I obviously have him in the top 5 because I got him to 5 stars early. And for raids, I find Wolverine to be really good. So yeah, I think Wolverine is fine where he is. I think he's going to have extra synergy with uh, Cable being able to give counter to Wolverine. So that'll be extra damage and possibly bleeds. Especially if there's bleed synergy later on. Should be interesting. Hydra Rifle Trooper is just another character. He's kind of like a ghetto Punisher. And Punisher is not that good anyways because his damage is low at endgame. In early game it's really good, but it just doesn't scale right. I think he needs more... Punisher just needs more damage later on, or possibly just all piercing. And he'll be a lot better. Mercenary Sniper is just another one that just does a lot of single target damage. There's already characters that do that better. So, yeah. Mercenary Sniper is in the below average category. Next up, we have the Shield Assault that has area attacks, but his area attacks are trash. Why don't you just run Quake or Cable or even Crossbones? It just seems a lot better. Now, it would be nice to have more characters that give like Shield Synergy, Hydra Synergy, Hand Synergy, Kree Synergy down the road, just to make their kits a little bit more useful. Even a character that enables um, ultimates on said characters, and maybe they'll be better. We'll have to see. We have the Kree Oracle that can regenerate and cleanse allies. Regeneration is really powerful end game because you're going to get more benefit from it. And I don't know. The, the Kree synergy is probably okay. They're just better individual options. And as long as Black Widow and Quake are in the game, it just shuts down so many characters. Next up, we have the Scientist Supreme that can convert negative effects into positive effects while healing allies. And... I don't know, I don't actually have the character to test out, but if it's anything like the other uh, aim characters, it's just garbage. Next up we have Punisher, who deals high piercing damage to multiple targets. Problem is there's characters that just do more damage overall, and Punisher compared to Yandu is basically laughable because Yandu can do more than Punisher, and even though Punisher can hit three opponents, I just think that his kit needs a little bit of work and damage, and I think he'll be alright. There might be some extra synergy down the road that could help him, but we'll have to see. Next up, we have the Shield Trooper. Shield Trooper does absolute crap. And it just doesn't do any damage. Counterattack is basically laughable. Yeah, Shield Trooper needs a lot of help. Next up, we have Crossbones. And this is obviously a top 10 character in a lot of people's list. Probably top 5 when it comes to Arena and Raids. Well, he basically kills himself, so you need a lot of healing to offset that. But he's not useless by any means, and he can just turn the tide of battle just by detonating and destroying everybody. So I think Crossbones, great the way he is. His offense down can be super useful. So his kit is just super versatile. And yeah, there are situations, especially in Blitz, where taunting to heal just to protect people while you have two deathproof could be the difference between winning and losing the game. And finally, our last character in the below average speed category is one that we can't play with, Nick Fury, which I find people actually putting Nick Fury on a tier list to be kind of ridiculous because you can't even play as the character. So, yeah, we know that Nick Fury is really good. We know that being able to throw buffs and heal the entire team is super strong. But without actually playing with the character, you can't really say... Kingpin is better. We'll have to see on that. So our first one in the average speed category, and there's a lot of them, Mercenary Lieutenant. Probably top 10 buffers on the list, or top 10 honorable missions. Just because when you can apply um, a buffs on a two-turn cooldown, it gets super good. You obviously have to get the Mercenary Lieutenant's buff to 5 to not suck, or 6 to not suck. But yeah, this guy is definitely underrated. And probably one of the best minions outside of Hand Sentry. Next up on the 100 speed list, we have Night Nurse, who is my third character at Gear Tier 9. And I just upgraded her single target heal to level 6. And at Gear Tier 9, I'm healing for 10,000. The 
Urgent Care is amazing because it's one of the only multiple regens that's AoE. So yeah, you don't put Night Nurse in for damage. Yes, Night Nurse does have a slow component, which can be super useful if applied right, but more than likely at the start of the match, you're going to be applying heals with Night Nurse, so you're not going to be able to get that off. But obviously, if you can slow a Crossbow and slow a Quake down, that could be devastating. Next up, we have Jessica Jones, which I find to be an interesting character because they can remove ne negative effects. For example, um, one of the scientist characters, the aim characters that just debuffs your whole team and then buffs your team. That's going to be really good against that. It's going to be good against Spider-Man stunning or even Thor stunning and just granting ability energy. Now, obviously, people run Captain America instead because it also applies defense buffs, but Jessica Jones is actually pretty good. I feel and her three can purge multiple buffs so yeah it's definitely one I can't wait to see if they do any improvements on and really all I think they need possibly for Jessica Jones is a speed improvement up in the 120s and I think she'd be pretty meta defining honestly We've got the mercenary soldier that can inflict area damage with grenades it's kind of like a ghetto punisher just not that good and we have Iron Man Iron Man is obviously not available to the uh, hard launch players, which kind of sucks. Hopefully they run another event that doesn't require five shield characters at five stars. Or just even add him to the premium orb. And I think people would be happy that they have a chance to get Iron Man. Yes, it's a five star Iron Man, but yeah, this character is obviously my favorite Marvel character and I would love a chance to get him in the future. And 101 speed is just right. Iron Man, much like Wolverine, Winter Soldier, and Deadpool just have high damage burst attacks. So yeah, pretty good. And next up we have Quake. Quake is probably regarded as the best debuffer in the game because not only can she slow, but she can apply offense down to five characters, which basically just shuts out damage dealers if it's available. And the fact that high level raids do require a lot of area damage to be able to control them is a big deal. So Quake is definitely... A top five character I don't have my quake developed but yeah if you get quake go develop it stop what you're doing and max her out next up we have rocket raccoon which I'm trying to get out of the supply store rocket raccoon some people were able to get the event obviously I was not one of them and rocket raccoon does do a lot of damage at the expense of survivability but yeah rocket raccoon is a really fun character and it does have guardian synergy so if you have Gamora's passive up to level 3, you're going to get more crit chance, which helps out quite a bit. Hand Sentry is regarded as the best minion in the game, although I still think Mercenary Lieutenant can fit that bill. At 103 speed, it is definitely average, but being able to block as a minion that can stealth your entire team, yeah, seems pretty good. It gives your damage dealers a chance to do their thing, and it's super good. Next up, we have the Aim Infector that can prevent healing and pass negative effects to his targets. Pretty interesting, although, yeah, we haven't seen the Aim Synergy work. And I think that a speed increase could help out the Aim. We'll have to see on that. Next up, we have the Hand Sorceress, which is probably the second best healer in the game. Although, Shield Operative in certain situations is really good. Hand Sorceress is unique because the Hand Sorceress applies a defense buff. And it's going to buy, for example, if Drax is taking a lot of damage, time to do his thing. It's also going to allow Crossbones to detonate without basically killing himself. So Hand Sorcerers is definitely useful. I don't think Hand Sorcerers is that great in Arena. However, as far as healers go, it could be your best option. Next up, we have Iron Fist. Oh my god, where do we go from here? There's just so much wrong with the character. Not only does he have the Ghetto Wolverine ability as his passive but why would you put offense down on an ultimate ability i just feel that iron fist needs a lot of work to be useful they did some work with thanos why can't they do some work with iron fist i get that they don't want certain characters to be good compared to others but this guy needs help next up we have nobu nobu one of the characters i do not own but i've seen that he can be really good with hand synergy and if you're running a whole hand team, Nobu just makes it better. So, great character in Blitz. Um, probably not that good in Campaign, but we'll have to see. 
Uh, Nebula is one of those that basically gets speed up every turn on the basic attack, has counter attack and evade. And Nebula, in my opinion, is one of those utility characters that I think are a little, a little bit underrated. And if Nebula had Black Widow-like speed, oh my god. Just so good. But I think Nebula is not quite there. I think the damage needs to be scaled up a little bit. And you can see Nebula being really good. Next up we have the Hand Archer that is capable of dispelling stealth. Much like Hawkeye's area or passive ability. So yeah, Hand Archer is definitely one of those that can be super annoying. It can also get rid of regeneration from Night Nurse. So yeah, I think Hand Archer is probably a little bit underrated. And if his abilities were a little bit less, it would be even better. Next up we have the Ravager Boomer. You've probably seen this from Yandu quite a bit. There's obviously better options for area damage and Ravager Boomer just doesn't do enough. Next up we have Doctor Strange, which I do not own because I was not a whale in Blitz or buying the orbs, but we have Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange being able to transfer negatives into positive or positive effects into negative effects is so good. If you're running up against a Black Widow or if you're running up against Captain America that can throw a bunch of buffs, Doctor Strange can counter that. Now obviously you're probably going to need your own Black Widow to make it useful because by the time uh, Black Widow uses the speed up and Doctor Strange gets a chance to dispel them all, speed buff will probably be gone by then. So. The fact that Doctor Strange can also guarantee a revive, I don't know if it saves a 3 star. I know in Injustice 2 with Aquaman it did not, so we'll have to see on that. Shield Medic, obviously people do have leveled up because in the beginning of the game it's really the only option for a good healer. Shield Operative single target heals are just not enough, even though it is a fun character. But yeah, Shield Medic can also revive people. and. I think that if the shield medic just had a little bit more healing or maybe it costed two or three, shield medic could find a place on rosters, but at four ability to use the group heal is just too weak. I think it needs to be reduced and I think it needs to be a stronger heal. Next up on the list we have the hand assassin at 109 speed. Hand assassin obviously has uses on a team because being able to heal block a crossbones to be able to wipe them out is really useful. And Hand do have a lot of abilities. It's just that they need an ultimate. I'd be nice to see them get one. Next up on the list we have Bullseye. That's basically a glass cannon. Can do a lot of damage. Has unavoidable attacks. Has more accuracy. So other than dodge. Basically all his attacks are going to go through. And yeah his ultimate is really good. I think this character is fine the way he is. Because you want glass cannons that can do a lot of damage. And yeah, Bullseye is fine. Ravager Stitcher, you've also seen this one from Yandu. If you want a better healer. Now for Cosmic, unless you have Doctor Strange, this is a viable option for a healer. Is if you have to devote so much to it. And instead of adding a healer like Ravager Stitcher, level up your Yandu. I think that would help you out more. Next up we have the Ravager Bruiser. I think the only time you would want to level up Ravager Bruiser at all is if you ha do not have Thanos. If you don't have Thanos, you don't have a viable second tank and when you get to like Chapter 3 of Cosmic, you need two tanks to not get obliterated. So while Ravager Bruiser just doesn't do much, he does have the defense up for two turns. Yes, he is easily dispellable, but you're not using him in Arena and you're not using him in Blitz. So yeah, Ravager Bruiser, I think the only use for him is a second Cosmic Tank if you don't have another option. Next up we have the Hand Blade Master, and it seems like none of the Hand characters are slow. And maybe this is the problem with the Krees and the Ames, that there's just too many slow characters. You see all of the Hand characters over 100 speed, and maybe that's what some of the other minion classes need is just more speed. Next up we have Deadpool which is also classified as a mercenary and I can't wait to get Deadpool up to 4 stars which I will be getting after this next Deadpool raid hopefully when we unlock Cable as well. And Deadpool obviously does a lot of damage. They did a great job with Deadpool and the fact that he gains regeneration when he uses his second ability which just obliterates somebody just 
take some focus off Night Nurse possibly healing your Deadpool and allowing you to heal who you're supposed to. Next up at 112 speed in the fast category, along with good old Ravager Bruiser and Hand Blade Master and Deadpool, we have Yondu. And we know Yondu is great because he can dispel two positive effects. He can also steal buffs and clear them every turn. So yeah, Yondu is great. Obviously need to put a lot of work into Yondu and Quake, but we know that Yondu is really good. Next up in the fast speed, we have Electra at 113. Electra does do a lot of burst damage as well, can stealth to protect herself, and has hand synergy as well. So I feel in a hand team, Electra can definitely replace one of the hand characters. Probably not the Archer, but possibly the Assassin. And yeah, Electra be able to do a lot of damage, bleed and clear a po couple positive effects from somebody and gain stealth can be useful, and being able to apply stealth to your hand sentries is game changing. Next up we have Vision at 113. His ability block can be really good because if you toss it on a loot cage, it just stops them from doing things a turn earlier. You can also apply this to a Quake, as Vision will attack before Quake. And yeah, it'll just mess somebody up really bad. So while Vision is definitely a utility character, and he can do some area damage, I don't know, I'm going to have to test Vision out, but I think he does need a little bit of help. The fact that he also has Avenger Synergy definitely helps if you don't have Black Panther and if you don't have Black Widow, because it will still make Captain America better. Next up, we have said Captain. At 114 speed, he's probably the fastest tank in the game, and the fact that his uh, taunts on a three-turn cooldown, which can also grant ability energy, really useful. He can also hit multiple opponents with his base attack and with his shield toss. So yeah, really powerful character. I think he's fine the way he is. If anything, maybe tone his speed down a little bit, but definitely one of the best tanks in the game along with Drax and Thanos. Next up we have Korath the Pursuer, which is also Kree Synergy, and probably one of the best Kree characters in the game outside of possibly Ultimus, who can't really test. Unless you're a big whale at this moment. But yeah, being able to block out stuff or even apply taunt to a damage dealer is so good. If you can apply a taunt to, for example, a Thor, you can eliminate them quickly. You could also apply it on, let's say, Night Nurse to get rid of them quickly. You can apply it to Quake to get rid of them quickly. That way, if you're dealing with, say, a Crossbones and they taunt, you can just finish them off and go back to it. Korath is definitely a utility character and definitely underrated. I can't wait to get him. Next up, we have the Shield Operative. I believe the fastest healer in the game. I just wish that the Shield Operative could maybe hit two targets. And it might be a suitable replacement healer for somebody. But, I don't know. I just think that Shield Operative needs some help. Although, not the speed department. Spider-Man at 116 speed, I think the character is great. The problem with Spider-Man is just he doesn't have that much mercy damage. Yes, he does have a stun, but so does Black Widow. I think that's where Spider-Man gets over shadow. He does have a defense down, which is super useful. So I don't think Spider-Man is useless. He just gets overshadowed by other people. Next up, we have Hawkeye, who is one of the only characters that can clear stealth, much like the Hand Archer can. And the fact that he can also blind everybody, he has a lot of useful kits. And he's definitely a support character. He's definitely great at what he does. Is he going to win you the game in damage? Probably not. But if he can take somebody out of stealth and allow you to finish him off, yeah, you probably should focus on Hawkeye in some capacity. Next up, we have the Kree Royal Guard. That is the fastest Kree character in the game. And honestly, I think more Kree characters, and especially aim characters, need a speed boost. And I think they'd be a lot more useful. And we have the Aim Assaulter who is fast. Sacrifices healing for rapid attacks. Why don't you just run Black Widow? Next up we have Daredevil. And off turn 1 he can do a lot of damage to somebody. So if you need to deal with a Quake and they are not running Drax. Daredevil is a great option to eliminate or do a lot of damage to Quake before they can react. Or if you're running Daredevil and Deadpool and they're not running Night Nurse, you can basically just obliterate them before they can do anything. 
And also in the ultra fast category, and this is a very small list, three characters currently. First one is Black Panther. Black Panther is a really useful character because he can apply slow and he'll probably attack first. So if you're trying to stop somebody from taunting, for example, Drax, Black Panther is a good option for that. Great against Thanos too, just to buy you time to actually go and deal with the damage dealers. And this is where slow is super useful. Black Panther is going to be able to get off the slow before Quake. And because of that, Black Panther is super useful. You can use that slow to just shut somebody down so you can deal with certain people better. His ultimate ability also allows you to do area damage, kind of like a ghetto crossbones, but it doesn't kill him. And can be super useful if you have offensive buffs, like for example with Kingpin. So, really useful character, and I definitely can't wait to get him out of premium wars. Second to last character we have is Gamora. Now, Deadpool has kind of replaced Gamora in certain cases, but not entirely, because Gamora does get three hits on her basic attack. She can do a lot of damage with her ultimate as well, and obviously if she knocks somebody out, she gets a free hit. The area that Deadpool shines in is that Deadpool can bypass Taunt and Gamora cannot. And Deadpool's ultimate, which is a chain attack, does more damage than Gamora's too. Now, it's not saying Gamora is useless because she can increase critical chance. But it's interesting to see if Deadpool is better than Gamora. Obviously, Gamora is a faster attacker, so Gamora will attack twice before Deadpool, but we'll have to see on that. And obviously, Black Widow, probably the MVP that just makes ridiculous things happen. For example, speeds up Quake so you can do your thing before the opponent. Black Widow will always attack first. And... Really, if Black Widow had, say, 100 speed, she would definitely not be meta-defining, but because Black Widow does, well, if you don't have this character, you probably should get her, and if you got the $10 offer, if you didn't take it, you're probably an idiot. So, I'm going to do one test regarding speed. We're going to do two fights, and this is the team I have set up. All of these characters have 100 speed. We have Drax thrown in there just so area damage does not wipe out the mercenary lieutenant everybody else can survive and we're going to do two fights with this team and we're going to see if the turn order is the same with the same speed value or if it's randomized so we're dealing with a bunch of groups and so jessica jones went first I just apply some ability energy because we can next up night nurse we got night nurse Going second, Jessica Jones. Looks like the mercenary is going to go last. So obviously, the speed up doesn't matter. So let's just go auto attack and obliterate these guys quickly so we can go to the next one. And we'll see if the order changes or if there is like a hidden speed modifier and certain characters will attack before others. We saw Jessica Jones go before Night Nurse. Then we saw the mercenary soldier and then the mercenary lieutenant and this is a big deal when you're planning your roster out because if you're fighting certain characters you want to be able to kill them and you want to be able to do work so we're going to do one more fight with this roster obviously did not three star there because the mercenary lieutenant died but i don't care so we're going to do this fight again and again we're going to have the same roster so, who will get to attack first? It does look like Jessica Jones attacked again. Yep, so Jessica Jones, Night Nurse, Mercenary Soldier, and the Mercenary Lieutenant. So, with that logic, you can see that even though a character does have the same speed, their attack order could differ. So, you see, it's... Jessica Jones, Night Nurse, Mercenary Soldier, Mercenary Lieutenant is the order. So, in our final test, we're going to run a couple characters that have the same speed. And we're going to do it again.
Okay, so in this team setup here, we have everybody at 94 and 95 speed. So we have Thanos at 94, Hydra Scientist at 94, Shield Security at 94, Wolverine and Hydra Rifle Trooper all have 95. So we're going to see the order that these guys attack. Wolverine and Rifle Trooper will compete with each other. And you can see the Rifle Trooper will attack before Wolverine does, but he should be up next. Yes, he is. Alright, so out of the 94s, Thanos will attack first. And then it looks like the shield security, and then the Hydra Scientist. So this is some really good information regarding speed, so just because a character has the same speed value, it doesn't mean that they're going to attack before you. Very good information and something that everybody should take note of. So obviously we're not going to 3 star it, I don't care. He's going to revive, we're going to kill him. He's going to revive again. We're going to kill him. Should be choke slam by Thanos there. What the hell? That's the third time he revived. And now he's got death blow. Thanos with the death blow. And finally he goes down reviving three times. That's unlucky. And for our final test, who is the absolute slowest character in the game? Is it Ronin the Accuser or is it the Almighty Hulk? We're about to find out. Alright, so I have this team set up right here. It's got Elektra and Vision both at 113. It's got Hulk and Ronin the Accuser at 65. Now by this logic, Gamora might be able to attack twice before Hulk and Ronin do. So we're going to test this out, and this will be the final speed test within the video. And by that, you guys should have enough information how speed actually works, if you guys are unaware. So Gamora is going to attack first, followed by Vision. So Vision does beat Elektra in speed. And yes, Gamora does attack twice before Hulk even gets one shot. Technically three times. So Ronin the Accuser actually beats Hulk, even though both speeds are garbage. So Hulk is the absolute slowest character in the game, even though both are at 65 speed. So yeah, speed definitely makes a difference, and not this again. Alright, I'm gonna have to deal with twice. So all the Groots are down. Hulk is going to smash and do a little bit of damage. Vision is going to do some area damage as well. And let's wipe out the healthier group. Group's heal is garbage. Hopefully when they actually release the character, it's not going to be so bad, but that's just horrible. And the current state group just seems horrible unless he's like... Guardians of the Galaxy Synergy. So, there you have it. There's a speed guide. And one thing I'd also like to suggest in the roster, I'd like to see more filters based on damage, armor, and speed. I think all of those could make a difference when forming a team. But, yeah, should be some information. So, if you guys like this pretty long video on the ultimate speed guide, which does show that characters do react differently, even if they have the same speed value, please give this video a like rating comment subscribe share this video amongst your friends and as a favorite check out my other marvel strike force videos playlist facebook twitter and twitch which are all hollywood shono my instagram which is hollywood shono's god my second youtube channel which i do stream marvel strike force on which is hollywood shono youtube live streams and does this guy give you guys an opinion on hulk and how many problems he actually has and how many other characters do you guys think need a little bit of a rework I think that the speed mechanic is where you start, although some people's kits, like for example Ronin and Iron Fist, just need more help than the actual character. Leave your comments down below, let me know if this guide helped you out. Have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches!